So we're going to talk about the first part, the wudu. What's the importance of it and so on. Now, in the diagram, if you remember, what does wudu help you? Which and uh, what action? What what does it help in terms of um, purity? Minor. Sorry, minor. minor impurity to uh, state, of state of purity. I'm going to cover step by step how to do wudu, very detailed steps. In English, this is called ablution, which is like a washing with water. It's a, for a religious reason. That's ablution. Now, important thing about wudu is this. In, is it mentioned in Quran or is it just in a hadith? This is actually mentioned very uh, clearly in Surah Al Ma'idah, verse number 6. Allah clearly says that, O oh, you who believe, when you intend to offer a salah, you should do four things. Which one does it say first? <coughs> Wash your faces first. That's, we're going to talk about, we're gonna, we have like 10 steps of wudu. But there are some things which are obligatory, some things which are sunan. So, but this verse says, wash your faces and your hands, your arms, and then rub your, uh, wipe your heads and also wash your ankles. We are going to cover step by step anyway. But now, the uh, problem with this is many people do not know that there are a few things which they should do and they ignore it. And that's so severe. And also some people they do not follow the sunans of wudu because of which they lose a lot of rewards and my intention is to tell you what all rewards you get by a certain action so that we increase in our uh, rewards inshallah that will help us on the day of judgment so wudu does it remove physical impurity or spiritual impurity so it, it does both actually, right? You're cleaning yourself also, but particularly spiritual purification, okay? And important thing also you should know that one time this hadith is mentioned in Sahih Muslim that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw a man doing wudu and then he offered his prayers. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw that little space maybe like a finger nail kind of space on his feet it was dry it was not wet so he <coughs> approached that person and he said repeat your wudu he didn't say just go and wash it and then pray no repeat your wudu and he also said repeat your prayers all that hard work that he did, all that khushu and everything is gone. It's zero. Because he didn't have that entry condition, which is to be in a state of purity. His soul was not uh, probably clean and pure. So that's why it is so much important. It was we're only talking about fingernail dryness on his foot. So that's the reason people take it lightly. Okay, I, I washed it very well near the toes, but just a little bit near the ankle it was dry. No? But serious, you do not have... Physically, yes, you are clean, but that formula that Rasulullah mentioned that your soul needs to get clean by certain actions, you have to follow it. Okay? There is no meter where we can just check that, okay, I have wudu or not. That, that doesn't work that way. So you have to follow all the steps properly. So omitting even a small part for certain parts, it completely makes wudu invalid. The rewards of wudu. So wudu is, of course, we get... <coughs> Uh, cleanliness, our spiritual cleanliness is covered. But there are a lot of things, so many things were mentioned in uh, books of ahadith and many, many uh, books were written on this particular topic. So first thing, our sins get forgiven when we make wudu. So in Sahih Muslim, there's this hadith where Rasulullah he said that whoever does wudu and he does wudu well, his sins will emerge from his body until they even come out from beneath his fingers. Okay. And also, and another one, uh, paraphrasing this hadith, Rasulullah said that when, he, when a person makes wudu and washes his face, so all the sins that were committed from face, from eyes, everything gets washed away. The sins get washed away. 
and if somebody washes his hands at that point whatever sins he committed with his hands it gets washed away same thing with the feet all the sins that he committed will be erased now i like this one hadith in particular which is mentioned in uh, at-tirmidhi you know this uh, the dream that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw and uh, you know and we know that the dreams of the prophets are real true and a uh, way of communication with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so allah showed a dream to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the dream i'm just cutting short this hadith basically what happens is he sees that the angels are arguing among each other arguing about each other what are they arguing about they are arguing uh, what are the best what is the best act of expiation which act will make a person get his sins forgiven what is that act so they mention 3 4 uh, acts in that hadith by one of the angel he says that when a person performs wudu in disliked conditions that's like the best act by which the sins can get expiated sins can get forgiven now uh, you you just see here uh, angels are not discussing they are arguing they, they it's one of them thinks that it is such an important such a blessed act that this is like the best act for forgiveness of all the sins so that again is mentioned in uh, sunan at-tirmidhi so that's something that we should remember when we make wudu just have that feeling that oh subhanallah allah get my sins forgiven because of this act and feel happy you know when you make wudu and come back have that feeling that in in your heart that inshallah my sins are forgiven you will feel better inshallah the effect of that that will be reflected in your salah as well and rewards at every step so there is this another hadith in sahih muslim where in rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he explained how to do wudu and then he says he who performs wudu and his sins will be forgiven and walking to the mosque if somebody walks to the mosque he will be considered as a superior superior gatory act, act of worship so this hadith again is saying about one who performs wudu and then he walks to the mosque so that will be considered as an act of worship so the time that he spends walking that will be considered worship just like we are in worship when we are praying salah our walking becomes worship that's why uh, our scholars they say that it is better you perform wudu at home and then go to the masjid with the wudu so some people when they uh, they uh, in fact during even the time of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam they prefer to walk to the masjid yeah. that hadith we also discussed in when we were discussing fiqh of friday yeah. the blessing specially people call it and the sahaba had horses with them they have mules but they preferred especially on friday they preferred to walk so and even i see some brothers they park their cars very far away on friday because they want to walk to the masjid because there is huge rewards in that. performing this wudu even in difficult circumstances you will get elevated in jannah rank in jannah so we know how many levels do we have in jannah again seven, seven main levels right the top one being jannatul firdaus so we there are seven main levels but within each level there are thousands of levels so when you make wudu properly in this hadith it is in sahih muslim is saying that even if you have like difficult conditions difficult circumstances and if you perform your wudu properly what happens you raise in in jannah the level increases so it's not that easy to jump from one level to another but wudu helps you reach that level another one recognition in akhirah though the reward of wudu actually there is this part of this hadith wherein rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was talking about the day of judgment and uh, he mentioned few things to his sahaba radhiyallahu anhum and the sahaba asked him ya rasulullah on the day of judgment you will know us but how will you know the people who you haven't seen the people who will come after us and he was basically discussing the hadith uh, the the fact that on the day of judgment like what will happen when we are all on the day akhirah it will, it will be such a terrible day that people will be so thirsty because of the nearness and proximity to the sun 
they will have no clue what to do and they will be so thirsty and during that time the special blessing that is given to our Prophet وسلم, is that we will be allowed to drink from the hands of Rasulullah the special water which is called what? Kawthar, Hawd al Kawthar, right? So we will be granted privilege and that is just for the Ummah of Rasulullah. So the, the Sahaba asked him, Ya Rasulullah, you know us, you have seen our faces, you will be able to give water to us, but how will you know the people who will come after us? And Rasulullah mentioned about this, that on that day my followers will be summoned, they will be asked, and they will be, the word used is al ghur al muhajjalun and the scholar said that it basically means shining white. So the people who make wudu there, on the Akhirah, it will be shining white. And Rasulullah will call them, you come here, because their face were glowing. Because the marks of wudu, we know this is particular to us, shining from here to here, here to here, and our feet and everything is you know, not shining. That means that he was doing wudu. And Sahaba really asked this uh, again another, in another hadith, how are you going to differentiate between one person and another? And uh, he said that if you have, uh, paraphrasing it again, if you have a lot of black horses, and some horses of yours, they have white legs and white head, for example, will you not know it? You will definitely know it. So that's how I will know and I will realize. So, and, and he also said that you should increase in uh, this uh, sh- uh, shi- uh, shining, uh, shining thing. And we're going to cover what really that means, extending this shining. And also, the last one, Area of adornment. I think I'll do this and I will stop here, inshallah. So, you know, in this world we have a lot of adornment that we can use with jewelry, the sisters use, and everything. So, some sisters might be saying that on the day of judgment, when we enter Jannah, inshallah, they'll be spending a lot of time doing what makeup, for example, and, you know, they'll be spending, they'll be beautifying themselves. But, you know, sisters, really, you don't have to really waste a lot of time doing that because one of the things Rasulullah mentioned that this will act as an adornment. Your wudu, your marks of wudu, it will be an adornment of the believer in Jannah. And it will reach the places where the water of wudu reaches the body. So this will apply to both brothers and sisters. So this is some of the rewards that are mentioned in a hadith. 